Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about my new little fitness toy here. This is the Animal House Fit Monkey Feet, I think it's called. It's basically just some kind of device to hold a dumbbell in your foot. So, a couple things I wanna go over about this thing, just how comfortable it is, especially not wearing shoes because I never wear shoes during my workouts. And if it's not comfortable without shoes, that's really gonna suck. I don't wanna to have to put shoes on all the time. Um, it's got some padding here and here, so I think it should be fine. Uh, if you ever put on a pair of roller blades, it's basically the same deal as that. You click this thing here, I believe. I was playing with it earlier. There we go. Yeah, I click it this way to cinch it up, and then you let go of that to release it. Very easy to use, it looks like. Um, definitely got good reviews on it. And then I think... I wasn't sure how this worked exactly, how you put the dumbbell in there. I thought maybe that somehow you just put the dumbbell in there and then like some kind of lever that locks it in place, but it looks like nothing really locks it in place besides your foot just being in there and latching it in locks it in place. So I think you would have to put the dumbbell in there first, lock it up and then put it on your foot, but we'll, we'll find out for sure. So what does that lever do? I have no idea. So the main thing I'm going to be using this for is hip flexor training, but there is some other stuff you can do with it too. I'll show you guys all the different things I'll be doing, but hip flexor training, just knee raises, high knees like this. I do this a couple different ways right now. Um, I, you can do it with a kettlebell. I really don't like this way that much because it's not comfortable on your feet and it really challenges your tibialis muscle. So that muscle that raises your ankle like this, it almost challenges that more than it actually challenges your hip flexor. It's just hard to hold it in place there. So, but you can do knee raises like that with a kettlebell. You can put just the basic ankle weights on there and these just Velcro on there, but these are four pounds. And even if you put both of them on there at eight pounds, it's really not very heavy at all. You can do a chain too, I've done this before. Just wrap this chain basically around my leg and then use a carabiner to lock it in place. Uh, that's cumbersome. It takes too much time to set up and I gotta wrap a towel around my leg so that those chains aren't digging into my skin. And it, it doesn't stay on super well, so that's not a very great option either. And then last, lastly here, I will do some stuff with bands. So there's a couple different ways I, you can do this. Um, you could just put a mini band on your feet, you know, around one leg and then just raise with the other leg. Otherwise, I like to do it like this. I got my green rope band and then my red rope band here. And then you can come in like this and then do some raises like this. That's probably my favorite way to do it right now. Uh, the only problem with that, I mean, it is a great option. I'm still going to do those. But with the band, you're not getting a whole lot of tension from about here to here. You're really, that band's really stretching. They're really working hard here in this last range of motion. You get the full stretch of the band. But from this moment right here to here, there's not a whole lot of uh, resistance there. And this is really good because it resists, hard. the harder you go, the farther you go up, the harder it resists. So, you know, you can really get some good, like, quick movements there, really train, like, your speed and power. And then, obviously, the harder you go up, the more that band's going to stretch and want to pull back, so it's going to pull you back harder. So, a great option there. But this one is better for just smooth, controlled movements. Um, and then, like I said, getting that resistance from the bottom. And then obviously you can play with it too. I mean, you can lay, up, lay on a ball, a medicine ball or a stability ball or whatever, and then let it hang down a little bit more and get more of that exaggerated range of motion. And then there's a lot of other things you can do. Hamstring curls like this, glute kickbacks, donkey kicks, whatever you want to call those. Um, you can do like leg extensions like this. So I bought two dumbbells basically specifically for this a 40 pounder and a 25 pounder so I'm going to try both of those out and then I got a couple 10 pounders over here too 
for lighter stuff. So I'll, I might try out those 10 pounders too. But I'm gonna set it up here. I'm gonna show you guys um, if it is comfortable on the feet, how easy and quick it is to set up and everything. So. All right, so I'm gonna put it on my foot first and I'm gonna see if you actually have to put the dumbbell in there first. All right, so loosen it up right there. I'm gonna put my foot in, wrap it back around, put it in there. definitely has to work there just to stabilize it because it is not super sturdy. Like I said, I think I got the dumbbell not quite ideally positioned, but I think even if you got it ideally positioned there, there's still going to be some wobble wiggle room there. So definitely hits the hamstrings harder there than the glutes. I'll try it. Lay it down now too. So that, really not that effective because, I mean, it's, it's tough right to hear about here. So you're getting that end range, but once you get to here, you're not getting that short end range at all. Like, that, this thing's just helping me. This is almost like an assisted stretch here. And then you gotta use quads to get it up. And then once you get it here, you're shifting back to the hamstrings. How about some fluid stuff here? Kill the hip flexors. 
rectus femoris, especially there, because I got nothing to support my leg here. If I do that, it's quite a bit easier. So you can do knee extensions with it too. 25 pounds here is challenging, but not too hard. All right. So and then to release, I'm just gonna pull this buckle here. It comes off nicely. Um, I had to form my skin a little bit and push it in, but there's not really much irritation. This is all nice and smooth. I don't know if it's like fake leather or real leather there, maybe or something, but it is smooth and is not really irritating to your leg hairs or your skin or anything. I mean, it does leave a little bit of a mark, but I think that'll eventually go away. But when I'm doing stuff with like the kettlebells, that kettlebell handle being steel obviously digs into your feet, hair, and your skin and everything. Even the bands, when you're stretching that band and it's pulling on you, it kind of rubs your skin up a little bit. This is nowhere near as bad. Okay, let's see if I can get it a little bit more centered and if that makes any difference. That looks perfectly centered there. challenging to do that. raises and then I'll try the hamstrings and see and probably the quad extensions too. Try those out. This handle is, yeah, okay. You can actually fit on there. This handle is bigger than the 25 pounder but not by too much. All right. I don't think I'm going to be 
using that a whole lot because my main hamstring stuff is the like glute ham raise and I just think it's just a little bit more effective. You can do both legs at the same time. It's a little quicker, it's still very challenging. Uh, this is a fun little variation though, to try that. Uh, but for most people, I think 40 pounds is gonna be way too heavy on that and it's just very hard to control. So a lot of people are probably gonna do more like 15, 20 pounds on that for a little bit higher reps and not trying to max it out. But it is pretty cool to know that you can do it. Let's try some quad extensions. Yeah, that's hard. strengths, my glutes, my quads of just the main prime mover strong muscles. I can do some of the uh, smaller muscles or like the adductors or glute medius on this one and I'll show you guys what that looks like but I'm going to put it on the opposite leg here. One, two, three, 
probably want to be careful with this one because if you let it go too far, <laughs> it'll probably like make you somersault over. But this right, right here actually is quite a good uh, hip flexor and quad stretch there too. I mean, you can even do like this. You don't want to hit the walls with the weight, obviously, but you can do like quad raises right here. Be more advanced. Um, see if I can do a scorpion push up here. Ugh, wow. Challenging. Oh, good lord. All right. Now to finish it up, I've been rambling way too long in this video. All right. So to finish it up here, you can do some um, leg raises and man, quite challenging there. Yep, that's hard. And then you can hit the other way too. So in like this. Let's see, I gotta find the ideal way to set that up. But I want to lay on the bench fully. Actually, there we go. Some adductor raises. Definitely not a huge range of motion here, but it does work. And I could really go like, let's see. I'm gonna have to go higher on that. Get like a weight assisted groin stretch here. So, yeah. Oh, now I can definitely increase range of motion. Obviously, if you guys are doing this one, don't go too heavy on it. I mean, even this 10 pounds is damn hard. And you are putting some strain on that inner knee ligaments and stuff, which don't automatically think that's bad if you're putting some strain on those ligaments. Ligaments are just like tendons and muscles. They need strain to get stronger, but you don't want to go too fast, too, too quick and injure them because they take a longer time to heal. So, there's just a few things you can do with this Animal House Fit monkey feet contraption here. I know I made this video way too long and I just demonstrated a bunch of stuff here, but hopefully you guys learned some stuff from this video. Um, overall, I'd, I'd give this about a four out of five. Um, if you really just want something to do hamstring or to do uh, hip flexor raises with, this is probably the ideal option out there. It is like 85 bucks, I think, after shipping, or 90 bucks after shipping. So it's a decent chunk of money to pay, and then you gotta buy the dumbbell, or dumb multiple dumbbells, obviously. So it adds up a bit, but there is other stuff you can do with it. It is pretty versatile. Um, how much you're gonna be using that compared to other stuff, I don't know. If, if this is the only equipment you have, probably quite a bit. If you have some other home gym stuff, even if you have like, the slide, the carpet sliders, you can do hamstring stuff with, a glute ham bench or other single leg hamstring work you can do with dumbbells or barbells or sandbags or anything like that. Uh, the amount of hamstring and quad stuff and then like I just showed you adductors and glute stuff, the amount you're gonna do with this, probably not a ton. Uh, it's kinda cumbersome to take off one leg and put on the other and it's just gonna add a lot of time to your workout where you could just do, if you're doing band stuff, or even if you're just doing body weight leg raises like this, it's just so much easier. All you gotta do is flip over and switch and start doing the other side. Um, obviously the benefit of this is you can put more weight on it and make it more challenging. And maybe that's something you wanna do once a week. You wanna put the weights on there and do lower reps and really harder strength training stuff for those muscles. And then your other workout for the week you just want to do body weight and just kind of get a good burn and higher reps going. That's definitely an option. <clears throat> but yeah, putting it on and off 
isn't super easy, super quick, and it is gonna add some time to your workout. But the main thing I got this for is just doing those hip flexor raises. I think it is by far the best way to do those. And I'm only doing like two sets with each leg. So definitely I'm not worried about a little bit of extra time to put it on and take it off. And I'm only doing two sets of these. And hip flexors are definitely an undertrained muscle group for like 99% of the population. So I know people say, oh, tight hip flexors. You're sitting all day, you got tight hip flexors. You don't want to strength train them, you want to stretch them. And that's true, you want to stretch them, but you also want strength, especially through a full range of motion. A lot of people lack, especially this upper part right here. So don't neglect training the hip flexors. You want them to be mobile. You want them to be flexible. You want them to be able to get way behind your body here without pulling on your spine and everything. So you want good length in the hip flexors, but you don't want to neglect the strength too. So for hip flexor training, uh, this is probably the ideal solution here. Just this and a nice dumbbell. If you're starting out with hip flexor stuff, I'd probably start out with a 10 pounder. Um, if you're more intermediate, 20. If you're more advanced, 30 plus. Um, as far as the construction of this thing, it's very hard plastic. I think it's got an aluminum joint here. Uh, it's got good padding on it. And yeah, so far, just my first impression of it is definitely a quality piece. And I think it'll last you a very long time, especially if you're just doing the hip flexor raises or a little bit of hamstring and work with it. Um, I know it's got a lot of really good reviews on it. And there is other stuff you can do with it too. I just kind of touched on some of it here, but um, it's really limited to your creativity. Uh, it's just a, basically a free weight on the end of your leg. So any way you can think of moving it, you can move it. So uh, yeah, construction's good. I'd give it about a four out of five. Like the price is a little much and it's still kind of tough to move from one foot to the other, but there really is no way of getting around that. I mean, you need a solid, piece of equipment and you can't really make a solid piece of equipment that's going to be stable with a big weight like that that also slips on and off your foot as easy as a sock so um, yeah definitely if you're more advanced if you're looking to add some extra stuff especially some hip flexor raises but some cool um, end range motion stuff for your quads your rectus femoris your other hip flexors and some end range hamstring and glute work definitely a good piece here it could definitely complement your normal strength training quite a bit so hope you guys enjoyed this review way too long i know way too drug out but hopefully you learned something from it um also one thing i forgot to tell you there is a delay in shipping on this so i think i ordered it like three weeks ago and i just got it yesterday so as of may 29th 2021 when this video is made there is a delay in the shipping so it might take you a little while to get but uh, just order it now if you really want one of these. Order it, it'll eventually come and you'll be training with this thing for the next 10 to 20 years because it is a solid piece of equipment and it will last you a long time. So thanks for watching this video guys. If you want some more gym equipment reviews and workouts, subscribe to the channel uh, and I will try to help you guys out as much as I can, teach you how to get some awesome workouts at home and also review some of my favorite gear for you guys. So thanks for watching.